Sylvia Zabini, our guest, she's a ninth generation circus performer. She can fly on a trapeze, but mostly she can communicate with Arabians. Have you ever tried to do what you do uh, with quarter horses? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've tried it with every Shetland breed, ponies. yes. <laughs> Actually, the quarter horse uh, was one of my very first horses when I was 10 years old, and uh, I had a Shetland when I was eight. Okay, yeah. and you remember the name, I bet. Yes, Silver was the Shetland pony, and Honey was the, the quarter horse. Of course. My first horse was Frisky, <laughs> and uh, she was a fat little mare, mm -hmm. and she wasn't all that Frisky. No. Promise. Full of attitude, though. Full of attitude, yes, yes and really fat. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, on the day of a performance, mm -hmm. uh, how do the performers bond with each horse, or do they do they go backstage and uh, say hello? Well, at Cavalia, the philosophy: um, the horses are the four-legged stars. So, it's very important for our riders and all our acrobats that work with the horses to have a special bond. So they're required to come in the morning and groom their horses. Um, we have a veterinarian, our full staff veterinarian, and a farrier on staff with us at all times, but um, our, our riders will come in and be responsible for grooming, mm. taking care, and exercising their horse. Okay, and are some of the uh, performers married to one another and ninth generation circus people? Do they, they, I know they come from all over the world. They do. We have artists from different disciplines and they come from all over the world, um, from Russia, from France, from, from Spain, I mean from everywhere. And yes, we do have married couples. Okay. and. Uh, and a little romance, too, yes. I hope. Oh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Why not? Mm -hmm. what, what's the actual surface? Is it uh, sand and sawdust or...? Well, we have a mixture. We have a mixture of uh, sand and um, dirt. We have special dirts. We have a combination of three different types of textures to be able to have that stickiness um, so when the horses mm -hmm. are galloping around stage that they don't slide or slip. So um, we have special contractors that come in and uh, prepare the footing that takes normally about four days. Yes, and look at that. <laughs> like, uh, I've, I've always thought a horse like you to blow up his or her <laughs> nostril. I don't know if it's true. But my horse is sort of like that. They're if you blow up their nostril, I don't yeah. know why. That's different smells. They is just, that it? They are curious, mm -hmm. yeah. They are very curious, and they are flea animals. Mm -hmm. So uh, the minute they don't want to be around you, they just take off. They do go. <laughs> so that's really important and, uh, to keep everything entertaining for them. It's, um, you know, the mind is the most important part of the horse to maintain. And that's why at Cavalia, every horse has to go outside every day. It's a rule. Mm. Rain or shine, they need their paddocks time. Um, so mentally, we have to preserve them because they are performing horses. And it's important for us to make them feel like it's not work. So when I'm presenting the Liberty horses, they really have to understand that we're having fun and we're playing mm -hmm. and it's not, you know, necessary to have to do the same thing every evening. Okay, and do they get it, do you think, when uh, the crowd stamps their feet and claps? Are they enjoying it? I know I'm asking you to think horse, but I, definitely. what if no one clapped? What if they were in there, or they were frolicking and minding and being perfect They're, and it was silent. You know what? They feed off like of energy. Like at rehearsal. No, exactly. They mm -hmm. feed off of energy and the horses do respond to the energy of the public and I do feel them enjoy it. It gives them a reason and a purpose. I have some horses that will be like Fud Buddies backstage and then as soon as they know it's time to perform, they show off, they perk up and right. they. And I have one horse that's a perfect example, that first horse that comes in. Um, if I were to leave him on stage, I think he'd be able to put a show all by himself. <laughs> well, yeah. we had a horse like that, a standard bred, who raced. Yeah, harness race, mm -hmm. and just perky. And he could lose the race and go back to the barn happy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like he's last or something, but he's happy. Yeah. Didn't know he lost. It was for the love of trotting. Yeah. Yeah, it was really yeah. interesting to watch. So, uh, on a day of uh, performing, uh, do you eat in the morning and at noon and not at night, or how do you prepare physically? Well, you know, physically, um, it's, 
I come to the site between 8 and 9 a.m. and um, we have evening shows. I have 14 horses under my care, um, three that are in training. So if you exercise every horse for 15, 20 minutes a day, um, you add up the 14 horses. Um, we have a, a kitchen, you know, that travels with us, mm -hmm. and we have our cooks with us. So we have our regular, you know, brunch and, and lunch and uh, dinner. Uh, on site, okay. so we do uh, eat on the site. Mm -hmm. But when you say cooks, mm -hmm. are they uh, gourmet chefs? Are they line cooks? They they're <laughs> gourmet chefs, and uh, they come from Montreal. Mm. And uh, our whole team actually comes from. Uh, we're based out of Quebec. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's the roots of it all. Yes. Perhaps. So uh, when uh, you're in the middle of those horses, and they're big beasts, mm -hmm. no matter how you shake it. How do you stay safe? By that I mean, you know, a horse not meaning to could kick you or yeah, um, bump you over. Yeah, I guess no, yours don't. They don't because I'm constantly. If I'm to run up behind a horse, I will let him know that it's me. I'll How never do you do surprise that? him. I'll call his name or I'll tell him easy. You know, like there's so many horses, and if you watch a horses when they're performing, sometimes they'll kick out and out of their horses mm -hmm. because some horses will sneak up on them. But when I'm running through them, um, I'm always letting them know that it's me. And by doing this, I, I just call their name or I'll give them a, a comforting word and they know it's me. And if I feel that they don't see me coming, then I'll just say, doucement, doucement. And then they know it's me, and then I can see their energy come down. Mm, really? Yeah. And they figure out it's them. Yeah. You, you know, know like horse, my name is Chagall. Right. But a horse will never kick out. I mean, if if he knows what's coming behind him, he's going to understand. Mm. It's when a horse doesn't see or doesn't suspect something that the kick comes. Sure. So it's up to us to make sure that the horse understands that there's something quick coming behind. And uh, same with other horses. If a horse comes up really fast behind, normally, you know, 95% of the time is because he wants to nip mm -hmm. him in the bum. Uh, and unlike a mule, who can kick that way. Horses can as well. Can they? Yeah, they can cow kick. They can kick I didn't, with front legs, yeah. I guess, of course they yeah. could, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the cowboy segment of the show. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's so great. You know, they're having so much fun and mm -hmm. they're, they're moving. Yeah. Those boys and those horses and girls. That yes. one woman, my God. Oh, Fairlyn. Isn't she amazing? Yeah, from South Carolina. Yeah. She's great. Is she? Yeah. South Carolina. And, and everybody seems to have long hair, even mm -hmm. the guys. Yeah. It's, it's part it's of the. It's organic. Our show's very organic. It's very organic yes. and it's part of the art. It is. You know, because it's, it's ethereal and it's tension release mm -hmm. as it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what happens when somebody gets injured? Is well, there a, a doc backstage? How does that work? We do have a doctor that travels with us, and uh, he is also a chiropractor, and he does all our body massaging and works on our muscles. But um, we'll get the twisted ankles, we'll get you know some knee injuries and mm -hmm. stuff, and he'll address them. And then we normally have, if we have to take anybody to the hospital, that happens. But you know, most of the part uh, we're pretty fortunate. Sure. And when you move the show, mm -hmm. uh, are the horses shod? Yes, some <laughs> of them. Only the ones that need corrective shoeing. Um, we believe that horses need to, if they're doing well, they don't need shoes. Mm -hmm. You know, some of them need them. Some of them will be corrected if, until we can uh, pull the shoes off. Right. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you move them, mm -hmm. uh, by truck, by plane? We transport both actually, depending on the length of our journey. Um, if we do, for instance, we came from California, we did two stops. So we will keep the horses in the trailer for nine hours. We will stop at an equestrian center, unload, let them rest through the night, um, load back up the next day, do the other nine hours, you know, remove them out of the trailer, and then they'll stay about 10 days in an equestrian center, and then about an hour away from here, mm. then the, the horses come in. If anything is over 15 hours, if we have to go to Quebec from Vancouver, the horses will be flown. Uh, oh. On the 747? Exactly. <laughs> really? Yeah. So when they fly, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so they don't bump around, uh -huh. obviously they have some kind of protective gear on or shoes or what? Yeah, it's the same as if uh, we were to transport by truck. Um, horses have protections for their legs. Um, they're wrapped. They have head guards. They have tail wraps. They're, they're guarded mm -hmm. up as, and you know, we put little light sheets on them. And uh, yeah, they're all <laughs> pampered up. <laughs> what does a ticket cost? 
<laughs> that, to imagine what it costs to fly them across the you country. You know, the ticket price is not so bad when I think of the expense. You know, we have 59 horses. Um, we have about 40 performers. We have about 22 um, staff members just to care for the horses, not including um, our logistics mm -hmm. and uh, our tent crew. Um, it's a really big show tomorrow. I'm sure. Yeah. How long will Cavalier go on? Do you know? I think pretty much forever. I mean, the, the beauty and the bond of horses and human have been around for centuries. And I think what Cavalier gives to the audience is, uh, is um, a bit of natural, I mean, a bit of mm -hmm. where we come from. Yes, and you don't have to love horses to enjoy it. Mm -mm. That's, the, that's the point, because of course there's the, uh, the artists and the acrobats yeah. and the musicians and the cellist and the singer. Yeah, the singer's awesome. She's great. Um, the Cavalli is a feeling I think that the audience gets when they watch a show. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you felt this. A lot of people will leave crying or really emotional. And uh, it's, I think it's just the beauty of the horses and the way that the horses present themselves. Yes, yes well, and it transports you. Mm -hmm. In this busy world, yeah, you in forget. this high-tech, digital age, you forget. It's very primal. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we need that, uh, you know, the, all the computer work and everything. And it's nice to go sit down and watch a show for two hours and just completely forget about yeah. everything and be, you know, transform into a different sure. place. And it's nice not to have to muck out a stall. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> nice to meet you. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, Sylvia Zerbini, and she is part, a big part of Cavalia, under the white big top at the Olympic Village, and it will be on until April 17th. They held it over.